Hello, I'm Ruth Allen. I'm the Chief Executive of Bazwork. Welcome to my podcast. I am delighted to be joined today by uh, Vasilios Sakamidis and by Rhea Agelic. Magalilic. There we go. Close. I'm close. I will, I will, I will practice that. Um, who uh, I'm delighted to be introducing in this podcast as uh, our new co-editors of the British Journal of Social Work. So that's why we're going to be talking today. Absolutely delighted to be introducing them in that capacity. Um, before we get into talking about that, I'll just say a little bit about the British Journal, BJSW. Um, it's celebrating its 50th year, or certainly celebrating its 50th volume, alongside Basworth celebrating its 50th year um, this year. And um, it arose from the coming together of the previous associations that also came together to create Basworth, the previous uh, social work associations um, and organisations who had their own journals. So uh, it arose at, at that time in 1970, 71, I think was the actual date of the first, uh, first volume. And um, we are celebrating uh, the uh, 50th anniversary with a virtual edition, which is a collection of 50 uh, articles chosen out of the seven and a half thousand articles that are in all of the volumes of BJSW. Um, and that will be online soon um, through Oxford University Press and you can access it also um, through the Basel website. Uh, I just want to take this opportunity to say thank you to the outgoing editors, uh, Professors uh, Margaret Holloway from Hull University and Malcolm Golightly from Lincoln, who have done a fantastic job um, in, during their tenure. And they're handing over, um, I know with great delight, to our new co-editors for a new chapter, a new volume, if you like, in the, in the history of BJSW. I said in a podcast I did last week that July is something of an international month because we have the International Federation of Social Workers Conference. We've just had the general meeting um, of the International Federation of Social Workers. Um, and this is the British Journal of Social Work, but it's not the Journal of British Social Work, which I think is something we will be discussing. Um, and also, I think with the choice of new editors, um, both with, the, with who they are as academics and social workers, but also in their interests, we are also, I think, uh, playing to the strengths of BJSW's internationalism um, for its future. So uh, as, uh, that's my introduction. And I'd like now to uh, come first to you, Basilios, to perhaps tell us a bit about yourself and about, uh, about your background and um, what your interests are in getting involved with BJSW. Thank you very much, Ruth. Uh, it, it is a great pleasure and a privilege to um, to be here and getting this role. Um, now, a few things about my background. I'm actually at the moment, I'm the founding professor of social work at the University of, of Essex, and I have held the role of the director of the Center for Social Work and Social Justice, the same institution, up until a few weeks ago, until recently. And then I have also enjoyed very much retaining close links and, and working with colleagues internationally, and in particular with, with uh, colleagues in, um, in Greece, in the University of West Attica in Athens. Um, because Greece and, and actually Athens is where I was, uh, when I grew, grew up and, and also where I qualified as a social worker. So I, I qualified in Greece several years ago yeah. and through a system that was really influenced by the US uh, model of social work. Uh, to the point that many of us back then as students, we thought that what we were taught didn't really respect what, what you said before, the, the, diver the international diversity and the different models. And that made me feel, you know, very keen to explore the reasons why. What is the political history of our profession? Why the American model was so dominant in a country like Greece? And, and this research, this question uh, brought me really to the UK, the University of Liverpool, where I did a PhD on, on that, the um, internationalization and international links of uh, origins of our social work profession. And, and after that, you know, the rest is history. I stayed in the UK for, God, it's 16 years now. Um, I, I worked at the University of Liverpool and Liverpool Hope University, and then I moved on to Durham and eventually Essex. Um, Brilliant. Thanks. Thanks very much, Vasilios. Um, I'm going to turn now to Rhea to introduce yourself and your background. Well, some of it is fairly similar to Vasilios's. Um, 
I've never been anything else but a social worker. And I think the same is true for Vasilius. I'm not quite sure, but I think it is. And uh, I graduated um, about 25 years ago. So about half of the duration of life of uh, British Journal of Social Work. And initially I did my first degree in Croatia where I grew up and um, I actually completed my degree in, in, in kind of casting fire as a social worker because I graduated during the war and many social workers I work uh, at the moment as a senior lecturer in social work at the University of Sussex and many social workers at Sussex and in many other universities across the country, all of them, uh, which have social work degrees are graduating in the middle of a pandemic. And it's an experience which shapes you for your life. So my initial practice experiences were working with uh, internally displaced people from Croatia and refugees from Bosnia, both in refugee camps and also those that were housed in different towns. I lived in the capital of Zagreb and I worked there. I have also my uh, difficult to pronounce surname can only be pronounced in Bosnia, uh, which is where my father comes from. And I practiced and worked across Croatia, Bosnia, uh, and learned about social work uh, also in England and worked in England um, for a brief time in Hungary in an international organization. Um, and all those roles, I initially moved to UK to learn from former chair of uh, BASWA, late Professor David Brandon in the early days of community care because I wanted to prepare myself for what is to come after the war. So I moved to UK and I worked in the early days of the institutionalization on developing support plans because my background is mainly working with adults although over 25 years I worked with young people as well and with uh, adults but my passion has always been in mental health and working with people with learning difficulties. So I learned in the UK uh, about community care and about how to support development of community-based services. And then I had an amazing opportunity to move to Bosnia because one of the positive outcomes of political conflict was to work and develop community-based services rather than rebuilding hospitals. And uh, it still is a unique space in that respect. And there I supported the development of community-based mental health centers and education, uh, interprofessional education for social workers, uh, doctors, and for psychologists who work in community mental health centers there. And I also helped initiate organizations led by people who with lived experience in, uh, of mental health services. I also helped engage them in some of the initial studies of these processes. Uh, much like beforehand, I had an honour of working, for example, in, uh, with the Tower Hamlets Coalition of Disabled People on one of the early studies of direct payments. So a lot of my work and practice has been uh, very much intertwined with people with lived experience and having and working alongside them and in partnership with them, both in practice and in research. And then later on, I, I have lived and worked in Wales as well, which is culturally very similar to where I come from. Uh, I worked at the University of Swansea for about five years, but I also had an amazing opportunity to be director of research in uh, an organization which primarily does strategic litigation and legal advocacy on the rights of people with mental health problems and people with learning disabilities. Uh, and now I'm very happily based as a senior lecturer at Sussex um, for the past seven years and amazingly welcome and, 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 and honoured to have the role of co-editor with Vasilios. Brilliant, thank you, thank you. Thanks very much for sharing, sharing, sharing all of that because I studied at your university as you know in Sussex yeah. uh, many years ago and qualified about the same time as you, different contexts, but also came straight into, a community, into community care um, which um, actually then did, I didn't go straight to community care because I avoided it because it was so problematic. But that's it another was. Not to work in that constrained way, but, it, yeah. but, it, but it's interesting about, we're well, really interesting there to hear about how um, both of you have come out of, um, in, 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 your, in your countries of origin, come into social work that was very much influenced by, by UK social work and US social work and that, and obviously that whole um, that whole matter about how concepts of social work um, have originated in particular countries and in some ways have kind of been exported and of course I think through IFSW and, uh, and through other activities through the work of academics in, across the world we're seeing social work um, emerge in its own right with new models new paradigms or blended approaches which are moving beyond some of those kind of um, 
um, kind of those some of those sort of old origins of what was considered to be you know the academia of, of social work or the the, the teaching of social work uh, and, and new ideas coming forward um, so I was just wondering about um, so that's what your 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 presentations maybe think about to go and think about that some mm. more um, but why why you've got involved with BJ, BJSW now? Why why did you think this might be something that would be would be um, a good thing to do? I, I mean, I know why you're suited and fit for it. I, I interviewed you, and I know and I know and, and, and I know what you're you're bringing. Although I, I think it'd be great for you to say a bit more about that. Um, but also, what what why 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 you know why does why does the British Journal of Social Work matter um, for social work here, but but abroad as well? Mm. Um, if, if I may start on this, but can I also say that before I directly answer this question, that we, we presented, we introduced ourselves as you know individuals, but the, mm. the matter is that Ria and I have been working together for some time. You know, yeah. through different platforms, we're not strangers yeah. to each other. Yeah. Um, we have done joint research on international social work and especially in social work in the context of conflict. We have done. Uh, joint uh, again research in on, on the matter on on the issue of the theme of radical social work. We've uh, been involved in movements and uh, we've done jointly and collectively uh, social work activism. So we have, we, we, we know each other uh, very well and we have worked together. Very so, well. <laughs> uh, now with regards to you, um, your question about the reasons why um, we wanted to, 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 to join the British General Social Work. The, I suspect that the first reason is that um, this is a, a great service to the social work community. We understand uh, the social work as a community, as a global community. And the British Journal of Social Work is, is a great platform and provides us with great opportunities to, you know, to provide this service to, to the community. We know that it's, it is, it's not an easy task, it's um, energy and time consuming. But we're really keen, really determined to to use this opportunity, as I said, to um, to provide to support our community, the academic and practice communities. Now, the other reason is that we we think that journals and this journal in particular provide space for shaping uh, the debates, and and. As you know, Ruth, Ria and I, we, we, we want to make confident use of the editorials, you know, as, as a spaces for opening up debates and, and discussions. And, and the third reason, of course, is related to the specific profile of the journal. Um, this is a journal with very, very unique, very different to any other journal in the UK. We, we, discussing before of whether this is the oldest journal or not. It's probably one of the oldest journals in the UK and internationally. And it is also a journal that it, it is owned by the profession, co-owned, it is co-owned by the community. It's not a journal like most of the journals that are owned by um, a corporate environment or they're owned by the, or exclusively by the publisher. And as such, it, it does have a different ethos and this is why it has attracted us, and that's one of the main motivations for, for, for our involvement. Thank you. And as we both have been involved with a range of other journals, so Vasilios was, which he's, um, uh, may not want to, uh, uh, may be too shy to mention this. He was the previous editor of the International Social Work Journal. Uh, we both have been involved in the editorial board for the Critical and Radical Social Work Journal. I was on the board for the uh, uh, European Journal of Social Work and a range of other uh, country specific journals of social work or issue specific journals. And we find that. This is an amazing way to present and share ideas, research, and to shape the future knowledge of the profession. It's an amazing resource, particularly not just for, for learning about the, the, the practice in social work education, but also to inform future uh, current practice, future practice, and to shape future knowledge creation. So to be able to facilitate and offer our service to our colleagues in that respect is an amazing opportunity. Thanks. Um, we've, we've, we've already had some discussions um, about how the journal 
in a way can do even more of what you were just describing there, Raya, about how it's, and, and, and yourself, Vasily, is about how it serves the social work community and feels connected in for, for people in practice, or how people in practice can feel connected to and use the learning in, in the journal. Um, in a way, it's, I suppose it's quite, a it's quite a traditional journal in the way that it, that it, 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 it uh, presents material and also um, it obviously operates in a space, so I should say it's got a very high standing as uh, in, in, um, internationally, um, so it really holds its own um, as an international journal and it's very important um, that, uh, that the quality and you know, the, the level of academic rigour um, and a whole range of, of things that go on behind the scenes to create such journals uh, work, work really, really well with, with really strong peer review. So that's incredibly important. Um, I suppose the, the issue for social workers on the ground is how do they, um, how do they access the how do they access the learning? You know, here it is, here it's available. These are fabulous articles, but actually how accessible is it? And how can we um, perhaps work on that? Um, and how do people feel that they can um, develop their careers so that they can also become part of it as, as perhaps in it as, 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 as researcher social workers who publish um, so I'm, I'm, I'm very interested in though in those things and I think that's where the partnership with the association the association that that's what owns the journal um, we have a great partner through Oxford University Press who do a really really good job in, 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 in making in, in the production how does the association of social workers um, which is obviously an association of practitioners and academics and managers and all sorts of people, policy people, all sorts. But how do we um, work uh, to, to, to make it um, more known, more accessible, feel more it's, it's supporting the use of evidence really on the ground? Yeah, and this is, I think, we're kind of going to go into what Vasilius and I suggested as priorities to the journal for over our uh, initial tenure. So we could kind of work from them from back to front because the final and, and one which is most important, I think, to practice and because it's front facing and practice facing is how to ensure that the research, as you say, reaches the practitioners. And that is the most exciting part, I think, of our tenure and something which is one of our four key priorities for our tenure to see how we can work with uh, British Association of Social Workers first and foremost, but also with other practitioners in order to ensure that the research um, is accessible and uh, seen as relevant for social work practice. And that that also, as you say, spurs uh, practitioners to get in, engaged in research. And recently, at one of the events we took part in at the uh, Basra Virtual Conference, there were practitioners who were saying, oh, I don't know who I would turn to. And as I've mentioned in the chat on the side during the event then, and as I want to uh, instead the invitation, please do get in touch with us. Um, we are people with known complicated surnames and relatively easy to locate. Um, so uh, please do get in touch with us. Part of what we have done in, uh, in relation to our involvement critical and radical social work journal is support practitioners to get ready to, pra uh, to publish and to talk about their uh, practice. In British Journal of Social Work, we want to both ensure that research, we want to facilitate for authors to be able to consider how they can make their research available and of relevance to the members of the association, but also then encourage the, the collaboration the other way around, as do many other initiatives around the country. And we have the knowledge of that. So if people need to increase their confidence to get in touch, because we'll gladly put them in touch with academics who want to work on particular issues, and also to put them in touch with initiatives which wish to facilitate that learning. So we really want to become more creative by using um, different online tools, which we are now getting accustomed to by using social media, to have 
uh, creative, innovative, research-informed conversations with practitioners and seeing how the research which is published within the journal and uh, uh, analysis which are practiced within the journal, how it can be relevant for members of the association who are practitioners and equally how it can be relevant for future practitioners who are now students. So we want to make sure that research in the output is more accessible and finds its way to intended or largest possible intended audience. Secondly, while also retaining the value of printing and, and publishing research as a journal article, which I think is very important and kind of engagement with reading. And furthermore, uh, also the other way around then to see how that uh, can spur others on to get more involved in research and to find uh, ways uh, to innovate in, relation, in that relationship between research and practice. I'll stop here and send, hand over to Vasilis to maybe go back to other parts of our list. Oh. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Um, as, as you said, Ruth, this is a traditional uh, academic peer review journal, and this will not change. I mean, we will remain a, um, a, a peer review academic journal, which means that it will also always be the right platform for publishing top research, timely research. Uh, big uh, the the findings of big research pro, um, projects the, the space for established academics uh, to share and disseminate their work at the same time we want this uh, the, the journal to move beyond this it should always be welcoming uh, top research but at the same time it should be providing opportunities for early career researchers uh, to to share the um, research questions, research findings, uh, help shape the debate, and, and also practice-based scholarship. Scholarship and knowledge that is being generated in the front line. And, and, and re-identified some of the, of, the, of the ways forward. And can I say that possibly the, the best way to make the journal accessible to practitioners and early career researchers is through demystifying the, the publishing process. Mm. Very often um, the idea of a big um, peer review journal is in its own right um, scary hmm? and, and lots of people will, would not, will, would prefer to use different uh, platforms or not publish at all. So we, we have already thought of a set of activities that alongside the more traditional type of work will help uh, build capacity and encourage um, early career researchers or practitioner researchers to uh, more confidently develop their articles. Uh, this could include um, open events and through, and this is where we need your help, Ruth. We, we want Basco to help us facilitate events, seminars, webinars, when we can discuss those issues with, um, with authors or potential authors and researchers, where we can explain the process, where we can advise them on how to get published. So we want, to, we want this wall, this barrier, to disappear and, and, and we'll try very hard to, to do that while at the same time retaining the academic rigor and the academic quality and the other um, aspect of this is timely and responsive editing uh, as we all know it sometimes it takes um, an awful lot of time you know by the time you submit a paper until it's published it could be uh, 18 months or 12 months we cannot promise that you know, this will, there's, there's no fast track to publication uh, because we need to retain transparency and ethical publishing, but we will try our best to work with uh, the publisher and what a great team Oxford have, what a great team, to, to find ways to make the process more streamlined, more efficient. And we have already identified uh, some ways of enriching the database of reviewers, nurturing the relationship with our reviewers because we we really rely heavily on reviewers, don't we, and volunteers, and, and avoid overlap in the process. So there's, there's a lot of ideas of how we can achieve that. As mentioned earlier, thanks to Margaret and Malcolm, this process is, all, is mainly about maintaining high standards rather than having to establish them. So for that, we owe them internal the gratitude. Yeah, I, I, ab absolutely. Um, and it's great to hear your enthusiasm as well, I have to say, because it's... Uh, Somebody just, when we were online in the um, event 
uh, the, the, the 15th anniversary event, and we had the discussion about the journal and about the virtual edition. Somebody put in the chat there that, you know, oh, BGSW is a jewel in Basra's crown. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's quite the right analogy, but, but it is incredibly important. And sometimes yeah. I've always had the, the profile. And I think that's because there is a, and there's a particular divide, I think, in, in social work, certainly in the UK, and I think it is different in different countries. It's quite a divide between um, practice, practice, practice and, and academia, or practitioners and academics, mm -hmm. beyond the uh, connection through the perhaps initial education, or if you're, you know, obviously if you're doing some particular kind of course, an educational, uh, um, in an educational relationship, but between research and practice and the doing of research, there has been a, a, a big gap. And as somebody who worked for many years in, in integrated context with colleagues from health, and I do speak about this quite often about some of that mm -hmm. contrast. It's, it's, it's a different profession, we are a different profession, but the connection um, of, between practice and research uh, um, is, is, is closer. And I think that gives a kind of confidence to have, a com to have conversations about the possibility of being involved in research or the possibility of being taking, ste uh, in taking steps towards that. Um, and it's also a platform for the development of evidence-informed practice. Um, and, and of course, we're, you know, journal covers uh, all topics really of social work and has not, certainly in recent years, has not been um, focused on any particular, any particular topics, any particular methodologies, um, any particular perspectives in a way, although you know, it, it, it conforms to, to our ethics. Um, that's kind of one of the values of being owned by Basra is it kind of conforms to the intentions of our code of, the code of ethics and global ethics as well, which is quite important, very important. Um, but it does have that breadth. So, and I just wondered how you, I mean, this is early days and also you, you don't want to give away your secrets because you've got to work it all up, but what you're thinking about the kind of breadth of the journal going forward and how, how you might handle that differently to how, how it's been handled it, um, in, you know, recently, which is just because, you know, things move on, you think things change. What are your thoughts about, about how it covers kind of all of social work? Who wants to go first? Go, <laughs> go Raya. <laughs> well, I, I think that there is, um, particularly in UK, as you both know really well, and anybody who's going to listen to it is quite likely to know, there's been attempts to push a divide into between certainly child and family and adult social work. And a lot of journal publications have, as of recently, focused on child and family social work. Um, we can aim and use this opportunity also to invite and, and stress that really British Journal of Social Work is a journal for all of social work practice across the lifespan and for different types of social work. And um, instead the invitation and, and, and for that to be, but I think at any given state uh, and I think that that's going to be amazing also about the virtual issue to signpost what kind of issues come up and what are the uh, dominant themes which emerge through scholarship. And um, just talking to Malcolm and Margaret during the handover, sometimes those themes spontaneously emerge with the articles as they are lined up for the issue, which is mainly done chronologically. Um, that there are certain themes, certain vocabulary we use uh, for the profession, or certain issues that we find more pressing uh, than at the other times. We are certainly starting to see, I've uh, just today in, in the online system seen the first uh, article which is um, uh, on the topic of COVID-19 without disclosing anything else about it. But we will see that some, some issues are, are already becoming um, something which is um, very contemporary, but also uh, uh, made available to the journal. So certainly we will do our best to reach out to as, and extend our invitation to academics who deal with uh, a variety of topics. And as uh, Vasilios, I think, said um, in our interview, and rightfully so, BJSW is the first journal of choice for most social work academics. You know, is, is the work that I have created BJSW worth it, which is an amazing honor to then be in the editorial role for such a journal of such standing. Um, and um, 
hopefully it will be going forward and that we just make the process of engaging and publishing in such a journal more transparent without compromising the quality of it so that it is inviting and open and accessible um, and very importantly as you picked up from um, our, our introductions Social work is an international profession, and I hope that Vasilis won't mind me uh, mentioning one of our goals is also to make the journal more international because it is the British Journal of Social Work, not Journal of British Social Work. So by engaging with the ideas, and that may be another way to, uh, another thing to um, facilitate in relation to the uh, association and to practice, how ideas from other parts of the world and practices and research can still have immense relevance for social work practice. Because it is fair also to say the British Journal, of, uh, that British social work practice has been influenced by ideas from other parts of the world and not necessarily from uh, the Northern America or from Scandinavian countries, but really across the world uh, in a smaller sense. But I think those dialogues are very much important. One of the things that I'm involved in at the moment and we are trying to build on is how to increase, for example, collaboration between the Northern Irish Association of Social Workers with, with the newly emerged Boston Federation of Social Workers. And uh, it, it's immensely exciting what can emerge from such collaborations, which is something that Vasilios and I have experienced working on together. So um, facilitating those international conversations and making ideas which may have been generated and research and scholarship which may relate to practice across the world still relevant across the borders and across different contexts and cultures while still maintaining rootedness in particular contexts and country uh, uh, and cultures which may have preoccupations and challenges all their own yeah, i was thank thank you um I was also, I was thinking also as you were speaking there, but one of the other um, things we've talked about quite a lot is also the voice of lived experience. Yes. And um, as you were talking, I was thinking about um, having worked on the virtual edition and having read much more of the journal than I've ever read before. Um, and in intensively, which is really interesting. Um, and that picked up on, um, obviously we were, we were reading what was there and we mm. were also conscious of what was not there mm. um, in terms of topics. Um, yeah. So for instance, there's much more about children and families than there is about, even in the broadest sense around adult yeah. social work. Um, and um, although there obviously are great mm. about adult social work, but the balance is very different. And the emergence of the voice of users of services um, directly as co-authors, very little of that actually people identified as user researchers as co-authors not very much of that um, but also where people are um, e even the, the language that's used about people's experiences and the voices coming mm -hmm. through out of the out of the article that varied and that that kind of grew through time like a lot of topics obviously as you can imagine have grown through time um, visibility of um, you know a whole a whole number of different aspects of social work have changed and ebbed and flowed through the journal but that issue about how we hear from people with the, vo the voice of lived experience through the journal i know that's something that you're you're both very um committed to to to, to doing something about yeah. to, to go to the next steps with that because it's certainly not that the current editors were weren't aware of it yeah. but it's just absolutely not and the editorial board actually has got some real advocates for how this might 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 change and it's something that Baz was very very um keen to 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 uh, to see happening as well and how i suppose i'm interested in how that might happen and also how that would strengthen the journal as an academic journal you know what this isn't you know this isn't just about something tokenistic how mm. will, how will this strengthen the, the scholarship and how will this strengthen the the evidence and the learning as well if we mm. have there is uh, i hope the studios won't mind me starting off again uh, i'm going to give him time in a moment though. i, I shall yeah. interrupt you Ray, if i have to uh, <laughs> i think that hopefully this shows how much we're passionate about this and I, it's one of the reasons why I love talking to Vasilius and working with him because you're both equally passionate about our profession and 
I love also how it was phrased as something which is of importance to the board because it speaks about the voice and influence of people with lived experience. And I think that language is important, Ruth, as you mentioned, going reading through the articles, how much our vocabulary for our experiences has changed and what we refer to as we find new ways of expressing that. And I think that we want to facilitate meaningful, uh, recently we had a meeting about it, to look at different aspects of the work of the journal and work in partnership with people with lived experience to see what they, where they would like to start being, to be involved and how, and how that process can be facilitated through a joint dialogue and, and collaboration, looking at involvement in the management of the journal, looking at involvement in the selection of articles, looking at contributions, so that the British Journal of Social Work is also seen as research which, where you would publish journal which is done by uh, researchers with lived experience or in, which is called produced by people who are um, uh, so by social workers without uh, lived experience and people with lived experience. So I think that we are trying to look at different aspects of uh, uh, work and um, to try and capture what for me is captured really well in the centre in Bournemouth where Mel Hughes, one of the editorial board members, works and uh, she's co-director of that centre, Centre for Seldom Heard Voices. It would be wonderful if in the times to come the journal and our profession becomes even more of an advocate for the seldom heard voices and that that is reflected in our knowledge production because that's ultimately what's captured within the journal, the knowledge of social work. So if it does encapsulate those seldom heard voices, I think we will be laying the foundations to do our jobs even better. Thank you. Basilios, so I'll come to you. And, uh, and we'll probably be concluding in, uh, in, a, in, a, in a few minutes. So. Perhaps so we'll just sum up as well a little. I would of course like to echo what um, Bria just said, and, um, and and I think that our plan for the, the plan for our for, for the journal is really to create a space where genuine co-production will be encouraged, mm -hmm. because as you said, sometimes the the involvement of people with lived experience experience has been tokenistic, or it has even become a a uh, tick box exercise, you know, you, uh, and suddenly I can see that in, 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 in some universities, in some programs, in other aspects that you, you involve an, um, a lot of, let's say, platforms or uh, courses that might involve service users because they have to, without creating the spaces for genuine empowerment and co-production. So, of course, as we said, the, the, the journal is not really in its own... <laughs> Uh, in isolation, the, the structure that will create this groundbreaking change, but it is a platform that will support uh, the visibility of this process. So it is our intention to encourage, prioritize and support research that has been the outcome of co-production, where service user involvement and, and involvement of people with lived experience is is meaningful, is evident, and, and visible. And, and this is an open call to both academics and practitioners and people who live the experience to, to, uh, to submit their work or work with us in order to give directions and, and, um, and mentoring uh, and, and guidelines and support on how to get published. Because these, um, um, we are aware of some wonderful projects that are happening as we speak, wonderful, that never make it to academic publishing and never make it to academic journals. And it is a priority for us to make sure that these projects and these activities, they, they, they become visible and, and known. And that relates, of course, to the broader issue of thematic diversity. Uh, as, as you said, Ruth, and as Ria said, um, a great proportion of the uh, articles published um, the, the focus on, let's say, you know, child protection or specific um, themes around social work. And we would like this to, um, to we would like the publications and, and the thematic focus to, to, to expand, to flourish, you know. And, and I think what makes a successful journal is when the journal sets the thematic agenda, doesn't follow uh, mm -hmm. the themes that are already out there. And of course, we will keep publishing uh, the important groundbreaking research on child protection um, or adult um, social work. But at the same time, we would like to, to see more research happening around 
timely issues like anti-racist social work, Black Lives Matter, environmental justice, the impact of the pandemic. So we want to be um, a responsive journal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, um, thank you both very much. I think we could keep talking, but I think we'll save some further conversations for another time. So it would be really good to come back to this, maybe do, do come back to this format in, in, in time and see how things are progressing. Um, that was really wow. illuminating. And um, I think the that point that you were making there, Vasilios, at the end about being responsive to what is happening in the world, as it were, is really important. I mean, one of the one of the other issues with research is often it's it's by the time it's published, it's sometimes it feels like the you know that almost the time has passed. Not always, of course. Many many themes just roll on are on are endlessly uh, important, but sometimes that can happen. Um, but I think being finding ways to respond to to what is happening. And in fact, the very things that you were mentioning there are, of course, injure, they're absolutely enduring issues, racism, discrimination, you know, the seldom heard voices, they, they are with us um, and have been for, for, you know, however, forever or for a very, very, very long time. Um, and, we'll, and, we'll, and we'll still be with us and we'll be part of, I suppose, about how the, the journal can be part of, you know, become part of the solution to giving voice to those things and, and having an impact um, and, uh, and motivating social workers, actually, to want to engage with these things both in practice and and, and through and through research and, and learning so thank you um very really really encouraging um thank you very much for joining me today um thank you for having look, us. look forward to <laughs> look forward to talking to you many more times and uh, thank you for sharing that with with our members and anybody else who listens and uh, i'm sure that this is this will indeed be motivated for people to engage for the future and do please encourage, we just want to encourage people, if you have ideas, if you want to share responses or ideas, or you have a particular ways that you would like to see this address, do get in touch and reach out to us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Bye-bye. Thanks for having us. Bye-bye. <laughs>